This video is for people who want to invest their money in the stock market to make more money but don't know enough about it. We will cover the very basics of the stock market to help you start investing. To many people, stock market looks pretty scary, but I believe that a lot of that comes from not understanding how it works. Let me start with explaining what a stock is. A stock or a share is basically a piece of ownership in a company. When you buy a stock, you're really buying a piece of the company. Each share is worth a certain amount based on what the company is worth and how many shares there are. If a company has 100 shares and you buy one, that would mean you own 1% of the company. As the value of that company increases, so does the value of the portion you own or the stock you own. Now let's say you bought that one stock at the price of $100. That would mean that the company is worth $10,000 since there are 100 shares, each worth $100. Now if the company's value goes from $10,000 to $50,000, so would the value of your stock. The portion of the company owned by you is now worth $500, as now the company's value is $50,000 and there are 100 shares. You can sell this portion of the company to someone else to make a profit, or you can keep it if you think the company is going to be more valuable in the future. But why would companies give you this opportunity to invest in them? Well, companies issue shares to raise money so they can invest in themselves, make different products for acquisitions to repay debt, etc. But you can't invest in all the companies out there. For example, you can't invest in Airbnb right now as of July 2020 because they are privately held. When companies like Airbnb and other privately held companies that are typically young need money, they go to a fixed group of investors to raise money in exchange for a portion of their company or stock not the general public, or they can go to the banks for loan. When the company decides to go public, meaning that the general public can buy their stock, that is what is called an initial public offering or an IPO. Through this initial public offering and other future offerings, companies are able to raise large amount of capital and give the initial investors a chance to sell their portion of the company. Companies can also issue bonds instead of stocks to raise money. Bonds are basically debt securities as opposed to equity. This means that you don't own the portion of the company but are just loaning money to the company with the promise that you'll be paid back with interest. Since there is a promised return, it is considered safer than stocks but also has a lower reward than stocks because of that promise. Now that you know what a stock is, the stock market is simply where buyers and sellers would come to buy and sell their stocks, among other similar securities. Stock market is made up of exchanges, which is where stocks are traded, like on the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. But when people say the stock market is going up or down, they are generally referring to one of the major market index like the S&P 500 or Dow Jones. A market index measures the performance of the stock market or a subsector within the market by looking at a group of stocks. The S&P 500 tracks the largest 500 US companies chosen by a committee based on their size, profitability, and other criteria. The Dow measures the performance of 30 large US companies and people generally use one of these two to see how the market is doing. So how do you get a stock from the stock market? For that, you would need to open a brokerage or a trading account. It's fairly easy to do. You just need to go to the website of any of the many online brokers out there like Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, Robinhood, or many others. You would fill an application that would require your personal information and about 10 minutes of your time. And that's pretty much it. Once you have the account set up and you deposit some money into the account, you can search for the stock you want to buy. So now that you own a stock, how do you make money? Well, there are two main ways, dividends and capital gains. Dividend is when a company shares their profits with the investors. So let's say a company generates $100 in profit, they may decide to give 30% of that to people who own their stock. So $30 would be distributed to the shareholders and each share would get a piece of that $30. But not all companies give out dividends and even if they do, they don't have to continue to do so. The bigger way you make money is capital gains. If a company does well, investors would like that and the value of the company would increase as investors buy more and more of the company's stock. What moves the stock in the market is demand and supply. If there is more demand than supply, prices would go up as suppliers or sellers sell it at a higher price due to increased demand and buyers would be willing to buy at a higher price if they like the growth prospects of the company and therefore the stock. 
If there's more supply than demand, the price moves lower. While this may make you think it's just about demand and supply of a stock, you need to think about why is there demand or lack thereof. This is generally due to the company's performance and also due to any news regarding company's performance which may impact the perception of investors and future profitability of the company. So if there's news out that the company has a stronger than expected demand for their product for example, investors are going to want to buy that company increasing its stock price as a result of the news of better product demand which in turn would improve the company's performance which is what investors are looking for. But how do you know what stock to buy? Well, looking for a good stock takes effort and time, or at least it should. Recall that a stock is a piece of business, and not all businesses would be good for you to buy. Think of the price of stock as someone saying to you that hey, invest this much in my company to get some percent of the company. Essentially, that price implies that the whole business is valued a certain amount. Now when you buy a stock, you need to figure out if that value makes sense to you and if it would be more valuable in the future because that's how you would make money. Looking at just the price of the stock and trading it solely based on that is not investing. But let's say you don't care about that and you just want to start and be part of the market without spending much time or effort looking for individual stocks. Well, in that case, you really have three major options and those are mutual funds, index funds and exchange traded funds or ETFs. With an investment fund like these, instead of choosing what stocks to buy, you're essentially buying a basket of stocks picked by a professional for that fund. These funds can be managed actively, meaning a portfolio manager chooses what stocks to put in that fund and trades frequently in attempts to outperform the market. Or these funds could be managed passively where the fund is created to look like an index as it tries to mimic the performance of the index it's created to track. With a mutual fund, you're basically putting money into a fund with various other investors that a professional money manager is managing for you and charging you a fee for it. An index fund is a type of mutual fund but its portfolio is constructed to match the performance of an index like the S&P 500. They generally have lower fees than the mutual funds as they are designed to match the market performance and are not actively managed to beat the market. An ETF is like the other funds but it trades like an actual stock would so they provide real time pricing but index fund or mutual funds allow you to automatically put money in them for whatever minimum amount unlike an ETF which you would buy at the price it is trading at like a stock. You can look for any of these funds just like you would look for a stock in your trading account. There are various funds and ETFs for different criteria and you can just look for different criteria funds in your trading account or you can just google funds that match your criteria like large companies or just tech companies for example. Once you find one you like, you can search for it in your trading account and read what the fund does along with what the top holdings of that fund are to see if you like that fund. But if you don't even want to do that, a lot of experts recommend getting an index fund or ETF that tracks the market like any S&P 500 index fund and I would agree with that recommendation if you don't want to do more work. You're essentially investing in the top companies in the US and your money would grow at whatever rate they grow with limited risk and this rate based on historical averages is around 8 to 10% which is much better than what you would find in banks or money market funds. The stock market is a great place to put your money in, in my opinion, and the longer you can put it in, the better because of what is known as compound interest. You make money from putting in money and then you make more money from the money you made previously. This is what makes the stock market so attractive and how so many people have been able to achieve financial freedom investing in the stock market. If you can ride the volatility of the stock market and stay invested, you can do pretty well. I really hope you considered that and hopefully this video can help you get started. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and if you're already invested in the stock market and what stocks or funds do you like. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.